C. I love you. There, I said it. And if you meet me tomorrow, I'll say it again, and again, and I'll keep on saying it until we're old and gray. So let's do it. Let's go to Baldur's Gate. I know it's risky, but so is staying here. The last few months have been hard, but they're always a little easier when you're there. Leave your boat and meet me at the hill overlooking the old bridge and bring whatever you can carry. We'll make do without the rest. And don't be late. Love, Anna. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. And we all roll with the spray upon our necks. And we all roll with the spray upon our backs. And we all roll with the sea beneath our feet. And the bitch queen stays the storm. Wave, mother, wave, mother, lash us to the prow. Wave, mother, to sell your skirt if you allow. Wave, mother, wave, mother, sink us if you will. Wave, mother, wave, mother, our skulls are yours with brine and sand to fill. Souls away and anchor still. The wind won't move without the bitch green's will. We'll wait gladly years and days till the bitch queen brings the waves. Hey ho, she told us so. Hey ho, she told us so. A tattered collection of reports held together with a moon and harp seal. There is frequent mention of sacrilegious activity among a local Selunite sect. This stained, ragged map has passed through countless hands. A little harp marks an area called Moonrise Towers, with a small inky crescent sketched in the nearby forest. Below the crescent is a more recent scroll, Cash. Each page in this illustrated book describes the meaning of a different talus card. A message has been penned down on the title page. My dearest Kalena, while you were sleeping, I did another talus reading. I half expected to draw the fool, because that is what I feel like. And what is your venture if not reckless? Instead, I drew these. The Ten of Waves, meaning divine love, bliss, or illusions. The Comet, meaning riches found or fulfilled wishes. Death, meaning new beginnings. The suit of waves resembles love, and I know what we have is still frail, but can you blame my heart for beating faster when I saw these cards? I've been staring at them for an hour, and I need to go. The cups aren't going to clean themselves. But I know that when I come back home tonight, you will be gone. But when you return, will you tell me if you feel the same or if this was all just a blissful illusion? I love you. Alice.
The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first heard its call. A thousand reed pipes at once whistling a single beautiful, terrible song. Uluth along, said Jaw. It's coming. Jaw dropped her pack and scurried up the nearest biter. With a bit more effort, I climbed a tree of my own, and the two of us surveyed the grassy ground beneath. There it was again, above and beneath and all around, so close my skull vibrated from the sound. The ferns and foliage under me rippled and swayed. Jaw held a finger to her lips to demand my silence, and in one motion, it snatched her. A vine? A tentacle? It hardly mattered. The hunter had found its prey. Jaw's screams swelled, then faded as Ulluthalong dragged her away. I leapt down to give chase, but the creature left no mark behind. The grasses were untrampled, the shrubs unbroken. I had only the memory of that harrowing call to guide me. Death is too powerful a force for even a single god to contain. It is a duty that has been passed from hand to hand, splintered into smaller pieces. Disease, war, funeral rites. But there must always be an overseer of the cycle as life falls away. For countless aeons it was Jurgle. The Lord of the End of Everything presided over mortality with his unblinking stare, until even he grew weary. Young Ball, Bane, and Mirkul must have thought themselves conquerors when they came for the God of Death, yet he used their ambitions to free himself. Mirkul claimed primacy over Death from Jurgle's bargain, but even he does not rule Death alone. What is murder if not the most violent of deaths, seized by Baal in his incessant greed? What need would there be for noble Kelimvor to judge passing souls if one deity could hold the process entire? Even gods can die, after all. Those who worship death should remember that above all else. Dense rows of scrawled text. The few legible entries seem to detail the names and final words of numerous individuals. Come see this, it's move! Maj Pinner, Laboratory Explosion. Hmm? Hrothcress, waylaid in a Neverwinter Alley. Ugh, you're blocking my light. Donna Ree, Water Davian Featherlung. Hearken close and beware the vampire. Beware its cold beauty. Beware its charm. Beware its curse. Above all, beware the pale noble, for the vampire cannot bear to be of the common folk. How doth one protect from the beast? Walk not in the blackest night, for the vampire loves these nights more than any other. If you must walk, do so by the light of our moon and take care. Carry the blessings and marks of your god at all times. But remember, your home is a fortress, if protected well. 
If you hear a knock in the night, be wary. Let no stranger in your home. If it be a friend, look upon them. Do you find them pallid and wan? See you any mark upon their neck? See you any dirt upon their clothes? Unless their need is great, turn away all but the most trusted. And if the beast finds a way into your home, flee. Leave love and family behind. You will not save them if you fight. You will not see them again. But they will see you pale and smiling, calling them into the night. The guild seal on the inside of the cover belongs to a printmaking collective in Baldur's Gate. Of course I remember. Knew the second that girl was walking she'd be trouble. Little thief, always in everyone's business, and that ward of Gorion went right along with her. It's no surprise a wicked god's blood was running in their veins. Anonymous. Candle Keep. <coughs> Saravok and his lot are always the first ones that come to mind. You know, this all started with a bit of iron and Nashkel. <coughs> Everyone thought their weapons would rot out of their hands. Back then, I thought the problem was bad trade. <coughs> Never took the man for a son of Baal. <sighs> Amnian mercenary, interviewed on his deathbed. You dare speak that name to me? My mistress was turned to ash fighting those forsaken wretches. I curse Baal, I curse Irenicus, and I curse you. Hostile vampire. Athkatla slums. The five tore Tethir to pieces. I don't think anyone expected more Ballspawn showing up would fix the war that a pack of them started. Then again, they were all inclined to killing each other, eh? Good riddance. Here's hoping every last one of them has been wiped off the face of Faerun. Saradush merchant. Retired. I'm not authorized to be talking about any murder with someone like you. Take it up at the Sea Tower if you want to argue. But honestly, who cares if a Valspawn got it stuck to them? Their father's the killing type, after all. Flaming Fist Gauntlet. Baldur's Gate. Several hundred more interviews follow, most of them terse. In life, her service had been impeccable. Daily did she devote herself to the Lady of Loss. Daily did she free herself from the tyranny of memory. All in time was lost to her. Her relations, her preferences, even her own name. Upon the altar of her devotion placed she the ultimate offering her emptied mind. And when she died, when she awoke in death and found herself standing in the pale and faded City of Judgment, she waited for the Lady of Loss to retrieve her. A million souls and more passed her in colorless gusts, 
but no hand materialized in her hand. No voice whispered instruction in her ear. No guidance proffered itself from the bleached and barren sky. Time, immaterial time, passed around her like air coming and going. And still, the goddess did not come for her devotee. Kalimvor pitied her as much as the Lord of the Dead is able, but could not intervene. This cleric of the Lady of Loss, unclaimed despite her worthiness, might yet have one more lesson to learn. That not of forgetting, but of being forgotten. Fine dust coats the pages of this weathered book. Beneath the bone-white powder, hundreds of short obituaries are recorded in tiny script. Grobian Tipple, Ill Mater, Drowning. Evane Arkinson, Ogma, Internal Rot. Devon Stout, Saluna, Fever. An excerpt from the ongoing meta-text, rebound by Iosefa Elgin, a scholar excommunicated from the Church of Denir for her heretical efforts to reconstruct the meta-text, her god's annal of lost and hidden knowledge. Of what value is a life? Far too esoteric a topic to warrant any serious critical consideration between these pages, surely. Or so it would seem at first glance. But once we push aside the mysticism and dewy-eyed sentiment so often clouding our assessment, it is clear that across all the spinning planes, each and every life does indeed have a quantifiable value. It is simply that not all are equally valuable. Consider, we already know that the destruction of our material form is not the end. If anything, our souls are more free after death transcending planar barriers in search of a resting place that best befits our deeds, beliefs, and station in life. But even this assessment is subject to market forces. Lord Kelimvor weighing our souls against how thoroughly we have given them over to other gods, empowering them in turn. There is, of course, an alternate route. Not the end of the path, but the chance to retread it. Clerics across the realms wield the power to return life to any soul deemed worthy or willing enough. It is strange, then, that these so frequently intersect with those deemed wealthy enough, for the components for such a spell are beyond the means of most mortals. I have interviewed those who have made such a return, and in truth have found them to be of the most dull and unimaginative sort that I cannot possibly imagine what it is they were so eager to return to. If a true assessment of the journey is to be made, then there is simply no replacement for embarking upon it oneself. Perhaps one day this great volume of learning will make me worthy enough to walk that path, and wealthy enough to return. This book is far lighter than it should be, with such a massive log. As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scroll. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what?
gods. These are the names of gods, once lost, but now restored after the second sundering. The last three names in this book sit close together, but are so devastated by the scrawl as to be unreadable. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. Here lies the guardian of tombs. Through knowledge comes atonement. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? A peaceful undead. Interesting. Why aren't you attacking me? Because that would be senseless. Wilt thou answer my question? Yes. A ask away. So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? Depends on the mortal. I am curious by what standards thou shalt judge. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. <laughs>